Hey guys, I'm Jonathan and welcome to another video in our Stealth Cam series. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my camera I had not too far out of town here in Bozeman and kind of the, some of the images I got on that, some of the videos that uh, I was able to collect. I think trail cams are awesome to, it kind of gives you an extra excuse, not that you need one, but just to get out in the woods. Uh, it's a year-round activity. You can snowshoe, ski, um, hike, you know, paddle, whatever you want to do to a spot to put a trail camera out. So I just think of it as a really fun uh, way to get outdoors and you've kind of got a, uh, an end goal of you're not just hiking to hike, but you're hiking to get exercise and you're going to go check your trail camera to see what animals may or may not be in the area that you're trying to scout. My first trail camera was a stealth cam when I was 16. It was big. It was about $500. It was thick. It was chunky. It had a bulb flash didn't take night videos. Uh, you could hear the flash, you could see the flash from like hundreds of yards away. The animals could hear it, hear it and see it. So the technology has come a long way. So the battery life is awesome. Uh, they're very efficient. The infrared uh, nighttime photos and videos is a great feature. And they're nice and small and compact and they've gotten a lot cheaper uh, from when they started. One really cool feature about these cameras is that they record sound, uh, the model that we're using. And uh, so we've got a bull moose. And the reason I put this camera here uh, in this specific spot was that in 2015 or 16, I was uh, shed hunting in the spring and my dog found an active black bear den. Hello? Oh, sh oh crap, it's a bear. Oh crap, it's a bear. Oh crap, there's a bear in there. So we got out of there really quickly. But I knew that the area was good because I had seen moose tracks and I had seen a black bear den. But it's really thick. There's lots of brush, uh, lots of willow, um, cottonwoods, and then there's also a creek. And so I had to find an opening that was big enough for an animal to get through. And it's just really, really thick stuff to get, get through. So, you know, you can do e-scouting where you're on your computer, you're on your phone, looking at aerial views, looking down. But once you actually get there on the ground, then you'll see you know, where an opening might be. So that's why I specifically put this camera here was it was on a tree big enough that it was stable and steady enough that the tree hopefully wouldn't move too much. Um, and then there was enough, probably about 20, 30 yards out in front and then maybe 10, 15 yards in front, there is a, uh, a lane that goes across so I could hopefully see some movement from the right of the camera to the left or left of the camera to the right. And uh, I had enough visibility at this spot to put the camera facing north in a clearing uh, that had a couple pinch points in the middle of all this thick brush. And so, sure enough, there's a bull moose right off the bat. So I thought that was uh, really cool. And then we've got a young cow, or maybe it's a young bull. I think it's a yearling. This was 1 a.m. You know, I've gotten hikers here before in this spot, fishermen, dogs. Uh, this is a black bear. I don't know if it's the black bear, but it's, uh, it's nice and plump. This is 6.30 in the morning on September 26th. And so I thought that was pretty cool because I was hoping for mule deer, maybe some elk, moose, and black bear, and ended up seeing moose and black bear. Here is a different bull moose. This one's a little bit younger. And so in a way, you can kind of document what animals are in the spot that you're looking at because antlers um, is a good way to do it. Elk, deer, moose. So the more you see and the more images you have, uh, the more likely you're to see or not see the animal that you're going after. Um, or maybe you're just looking around for just the fun of it. Maybe you're not going to plan on hunting in this spot. It's just a spot that you want to see what kind of wildlife you have. When you've seen tracks and you've seen uh, the scat, it's really cool to actually see the, the animal that has been leaving those behind. And so that's why I really like trail cams is because you can see things that are there when you're not there. And so here's a daytime bull moose. Um, so yeah, just really, really cool. Uh, the month of September was super active at this one spot. And this is at 12.30 p.m. on September 30th, 55 degrees, super clear, 1080, full HD video. Um, you can even hear him walking through the brush. Now the fall leaves are coming down and 8.43 in the morning, October 8th, moose strolling through 35 degrees. And then the last clip on that card was a little calf. Um, this was 7.54 p.m. October 10th, just kind of hanging out. This one spot I saw a cow, multiple calves, and I think three different bulls. 
So one thing I learned about camera placement was this camera specifically I put on a, I wouldn't say a sapling, it's a tree, it's a deciduous tree about, I don't know, maybe this thick. So that's prone to the wind moving it. And so I have seen that if you put a camera too close to tall grass or brush, um, you'll get that in the image. But if you actually put the camera itself on a skinny enough tree, the tree will sway with the wind. And that's no good because I've had dozens and dozens of shots of uh, the wind blowing a skinny tree. So you gotta be careful about where you're putting the camera. Um, typically you don't wanna put it facing south because it'll get direct sunlight into the lens all day. So I have it facing north for this one camera. So I would definitely suggest uh, facing a camera north, maybe not east or west because you don't wanna get sunrise or sunset glaring directly into the lens. So yeah, that was my first card uh, from mid-September to about mid-October. So I think for the next video, I'll get into the, uh, the kind of out of Bozeman, a little bit more wilderness camera that I had set up. Got some cool things on that. But for now, I mean, it's really cool to see what is not far from popular hiking trails, uh, when the animals are active, what specific animals are there, what specific animals are not there, human activity. So that's what I got on my first card on my first camera close to town. And so now we've got a little bit of uh, backcountry stuff we're going to show you throughout the series. We've got some backyard stuff we're going to show you throughout the series uh, just to see what we've all gotten on our cameras. And then now I will turn it over to Dale and we will see what he got. Well, thanks, Jonathan. I, uh, I really enjoyed looking at your clips. And uh, so now it's time for me to show some clips. When Randy first gave us these cameras, he's like, hey, guys, you know, I want you to use this out in backyard, backcountry, like wherever. Like since we live in Montana, we've got some really cool wildlife that, you know, can just be just about anywhere. So with me using trail cameras, since really, since I can remember um, hunting whitetail deer back east, I was like, oh, I know a perfect little spot. I live on about 400 acres and we've got a lot of wildlife that just stay right around there with whitetail deer, coyotes, um, had some moose come through, had a black bear on the property um, in the spring of last year. So I kind of knew what I where I wanted to put it. And out about, I'd say, 800 yards or so from my house, there's these two fence rows that come together. And I'll show you here on my Go Hunt maps. So as you can see, I've got my point here of where the trail camera was set up. But what you can't really see, you can see a, a change of two different fields here. Well, running north-south um, is a fence line. And then running east-west, kind of making a T, is another fence line. Well, all this to the south is somebody else's property. And they constantly grow agriculture. So knowing that, with all of that agriculture food and everything, I've seen just from my you know, back porch that deer like to be on our property and bed during the day or you know, at night and stuff. And then they'll move back and forth from our property to their property. So what I want to do with this trail camera is there's kind of this pinch point where these two uh, fence lines come together. And that's where these deer like to hug the edge of this fence line and then they'll jump the fence line where it kind of be, uh, creates this, you know, man-made uh, pinch point. So that's where I ended up setting up this camera. And you can kind of see that throughout this diagram here um, of deer movement, where the bedding is, where the feed is, and how um, I set it up to catch that. So now let's um, start looking at some of these clips. Uh, I got it in early... September and um, right off the bat, I had a little uh, forky whitetail buck like come out in front of the camera, was literally right on top of it. September 12th, we got two small bucks and uh, two does out in front of the camera. So this is a pretty funny clip here. He's got a magpie on his butt, literally walking around. So this video is cool here. You can kind of see how these bucks are starting to posture a little bit, trying to figure out maybe, quote, a little bit of a pecking order. And now there's three bucks. It's now 5.28 in the morning and we got a visitor up close and personal. Uh, he's actually like smelling the camera, checking it out. <laughs> 
it's funny how they can they can smell the oils on your hands um, that you leave on the camera. Now we're on to the 13th of September, and again a nice little uh, four point, and then another four point kind of walks in here at 4:30 in the afternoon. Here's another buck. We got three bucks in front of the camera at one time. So now we're on to September 15th, uh, 6.14, 6.15 in the evening. And there's another nice buck. Um, you know, I'm just out there and now he's smelling the camera, fogging up my lens. One thing that I do notice uh, when you start looking at these trail cameras and when you have a lot of different deer uh, coming in is quickly realizing the body size difference. Here we got three bucks in front of the camera again. And again, you can kind of see that, how they posture against one another and, um, you know, just trying to figure out who's the boss. Uh, this is one of the bucks that we've seen before here. And you can kind of see he's got some like velvet still hanging on his antlers. And it's, it's really interesting to see all that. So that's my first round of clips uh, that I had. You know, I, I had my camera out for about two weeks while I was gone on a hunt um, filming. And, you know, I, I hope you guys are really enjoying this series. There, there's a lot more to come down the line and some really cool stuff to come down the line. We still have Marcus, Michael, uh, Randy to show you some, Paul as well. So uh, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this.